And we're continuing in the same subject that we talked about. Also last week we talked about it. And that's this idea of the new Torah. That there's a new Torah. When Mashiach is going to come, there's going to be a new Torah. Torah. And as we know, there's the Torah was always going, it's never going to be changed. The Torah will never be changed. All the laws of the Torah, all of the sentences of the Torah, the words of the Torah, nothing's going to be changed. So what is it? But it says it's going to be a new Torah. What does it mean? Because a new Torah means that we're going to understand the Torah in a much more complete and full way. And even more, they tell you <clears throat> just to drive home the idea <clears throat> that it's not going to be a different Torah. It says the same Isaiah that said it's going to be a new Torah. <clears throat> In fact, he didn't say it's going to be a new Torah. Right? That's the, the Midrash says it. Isaiah says that the Torah, God is speaking and saying the Torah is going to come from me. Torah mi iti it's going to come from me. And so that sort of arouses a question, what do you mean the Torah is going to come from me? Of course the Torah comes from God. He says, no, it's going to be a new Torah. What does it mean to be a new Torah? That we'll feel the godliness in the Torah. That's the point. How are we going to feel the godliness in the Torah? Because we'll be more sensitive and appreciative of the godliness in the Torah. Our minds will be <clears throat> widened. And even more, it says that there's going to be not just a new Torah, it says there's going to be a new heavens and earth. Shemayim ba'aretz chadashim, it's because there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth. Let's see, where is this? Yeah. A new heavens and a new earth is going to be. What does that mean? It means that we're going to see the godliness in the heavens and the earth. We're going to see the godliness which is in every detail of the heavens and the earth. <clears throat> That's what it means is going to be new. And Parsha's Nosoi that we read after the giving of the Torah, right? This Friday is going to be the giving of the Torah. And we read Parsha's Nosoi afterwards. In Israel, we read it the day after. And in, in outside of Israel, we read it a week after. It just knows terrible. Here we go. <clears throat> so Parshas Nosa means to be elevated. It means that will it will elevate even the revelation of the Torah, and that's hinting at this new Torah that's going to be given. The new Torah, the godliness in the Torah. Let's explain this. Omer Rizal, the rabbi say, call Omer Dabavashem Omru. Anyone who says something in the name of one who said it, in other words, the original speaker, like you say something in the in the Gemara, the Rabbi Akiva said, the Rabbi Meir said. Maybe Gulalolam, it brings redemption to the world. It's in Pirkiavot also. That the Vayomer, the uh, Esther Bashem Mordechai, that Esther went to the to King Ahasuerus, she, she said in the name of Mordechai. And, it was, if you, and that brought the redemption to the world. That brought the savior of the, of the Jewish people. But Hezbollah but said the explanation is Shachirish, the Torah, the novelty of the Torah, that the Torah becomes that the world's. All of the world becomes brand new. Shemachadshim and Megalim, Talumos, I'm sorry, that is revealed. And Talumo Tachma, new hidden ideas that were concealed in the exile. Arata, this is the idea of Geula. You put the Aleph in, you just add in the word Gola, means exile. And you put a new awareness of God, that's the letter Aleph, into the world. By means of this future redemption, this brings then it brings also not just to the Torah, but also to the world. This future redemption that we're waiting for, where everybody's going to feel godliness, this is he, this is in the time and the situation of exile. Like it was in Purim. What was in Purim? And from that, that's where the the that's where the, we learn this principle that if you quote anyone that says a good thing, that that brings redemption to the world. Shenem arba tomer Esther, that Esther said in the name of Mordechai. It says, Akati, Avdi Achashverosh Anan. Even now, we are still the servants of Achashverosh. And there was the future redemption. 
there was a big redemption, but nevertheless, we're still servants of, of Achashverosh. What does that mean? Al by means of this, by means of this, it brings the true, complete redemption. The reason is, even since Shagama Geula, also this idea of the redemption in the Torah, it's not complete. Sharigam Achrei, even after Shetalmid Vatik Megale Umechadesh Inyan, when God gave the Torah to the Jewish people, so it says that everything was revealed in the Torah. But nevertheless, even though that happened, that God gave all the revelations when he gave the Torah on Mount Sinai, even the revelations that are going to be in the days of the Mashiach, but nevertheless, the Jewish people still remained in exile. And what's the proof? The proof was is that they worshipped the golden calf afterwards. Shleim Otagula, the whole idea of the future redemption, when they will be re revealed, truly revealed, all of the godliness is in the Torah is by means of God himself. That's what it means, Torah Chadasha, a brand new Torah, is going to come out from me. Namely, we will feel that the Torah is not just a book that was given by God to Moses a long time ago, and it's still being like renewed by godliness right now. No, we'll feel that God is giving us the Torah right now. He's giving it to us, me and you, right now. It's also the revelation of the Torah will be in the power of God. The new Torah, Teitze, will come out Me'iti from me, from God Himself. and therefore, will the revelation will be and the ultimate completion. Shalu Yishar Shum and Yambel, nothing will be concealed. Moshe Gatuv, like it says, Lo Yikanef Od Morecha, it says that you will not your master, in other words, God will not be concealed from you. But Enecha Raot Morecha, and your eyes will see your teacher. Everyone will see and know God. Right, just like nowadays when a person, we feel ourselves, right? You ask to go up to a person and say, excuse me, sir, do you know where your feet are? The person says, what are you talking about? Where, 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 I'm asking a good question. Where are your feet? So what do you mean, where are my feet? The same place your feet are, down at the bottom of your leg, the bottom of your legs. <laughs> That's where your feet are. It's an obvious thing. Where are your feet? Okay, okay, you, you passed that one. Now, where are your eyes? Where is everybody's? What type of questions are there? This is ridiculous. That's because we're sure that we exist and we feel ourselves. There's nothing more obvious. In the future, it'll be the same thing with God. Excuse me, sir, can you tell me what is right and what is wrong? So what are you nuts? What are you talking about? What's right? What's written in the Torah is what's right. Can you tell me what's written in the Torah? I don't understand what you're talking about. What's... Everyone in the world knows what's written in the Torah. Everyone in the world knows what's written in the Torah. That's the, the world is created from the Torah. The world is only for the Torah. The whole entire world will know naturally that it's bad to kill, it's bad to steal, it's bad to, to, to commit adultery, it's bad to do this. It, it'll be a natural thing. It'll be an obvious thing that everyone will want to do what God wants. I'll give days there by means of this. It will also be redemption in the whole world. The world is helem, is from concealment. I'll shame a hell of a Hester because of the concealment of, the, of godliness in the world. I know Shechai the godliness in the world, <clears throat> the godliness in the world is in a way of exile. Hagu'ula la'olam, he she mitbatel legamri, that the world becomes totally surrendered to, to, to God, and there is totally done away with any concealment of godliness in the world. There won't be any possibility of doubting where God is. Right? Like every human being, every healthy human being knows where their own, where their feet are. They know where their eyes are. It's an obvious thing. Same thing. Everybody in the world will know and feel that God is creating the world and why God is creating the world, why God is creating me for. And of course, it won't be like in a religious way that everybody's just going to be zombies and do it, what they have to do. And anybody who like breaks line or something gets shot. So no. Everybody has total free will. But the total free will won't be misused. That's the point. People won't use their total free will to, 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 to be, get, become addicted or to become aggressive or whatever with others. The world can get along very, very well without any addictions and without any murder and without this. The world doesn't need those things. That's what it means. The heavens and the earth are going to be brand new. Low rock is not just a, a novelty in the heavens and the earth that were created in the six days of creation, like it was 
and the, for instance, in the days of Matan Torah, or even when Adam was in the world, El Shamayim Chadashim is going to be a brand new heavens and earth, even different, more, I would say, godly than it was Adam before he ate from the tree. Achirush Bam who is Galus Ani Ose, everyone will see that God is doing it. Shakoach Elo that the godly force which creates the heavens and the earth, Me'ain Liesh from nothing to something in a way of Rikuk Babdullah, in a way which is totally incomprehensible and far away from us. Eno Mitkalab M, it won't be revealed in them. Ah. And it's not revealed in them that God is creating the world all the time, it'll be revealed. We'll feel how lucky we are, how amazingly, how uh, blessed we are that we're being created, that the world is being created, and that we can use the world the way that God wants. There will be nira begilu shemayim ba'oritz hakoach elokesh ma'avi otam me'ayin liyesh. Usually, people think like this: you know, if God really reveals, so everybody's going to be zombies. We'll all be like machines. It's going to be terrible. Nobody's going to have any free will. Right? And we're going to. Everybody's going to be like inhuman. But the fact of the matter is, we see that paradoxically, it's exactly the opposite. The people that really deny God totally, right, that deny God totally, it brings eventually, let's say communism, for instance, right, fascism, all these people, the woke movement, the things, it becomes more and more insensitive and more and more inhuman and more anti-life and more anti-free will, right? You can't do what you want. If you go against these people, you say a word against communism, the communist regime, they killed you. You say a word against right, the, the woke guys, they get all angry. They would they, they would send you away to a concentration. Who knows what they would do? Anything to silence you. <clears throat> and then suddenly, all of a sudden, if a person believes in God, then he becomes really free. And we're talking about the God of Israel. He becomes free. First of all, he knows what's right and what's wrong. Right, you know what the map is. You want to go from here to Chicago, so you just don't go wherever you want. You know, it's just you have to have a road map. Then you have the road map. Then you're free. Right, you can go in any type of car you want. You have whatever transportation you want. You want to take a plane. You want to take a train. You want to take a car. You want to take a bus. You want to take this. You go out of it. But if you don't have a road map, then no matter what you take, you're going in the wrong direction. And especially if you get angry at anybody else that tells you you're going wrong. Excuse me, sir. Where are you going? Chicago. Well, Chicago's in a different way. You just shut up. But you just keep quiet. <laughs> what type of world is that? Here we're talking about that God is telling everybody what the proper direction is and how you can make it. But people don't want to leave their little egotism and their worlds. Nobody does. I also don't want to. That's the way God created us. But we should be like that. And our job is to change our nature. And that's a big novelty. And then is revealed what's called the power of God's essence. Ani osa suddenly re revealed that the God who gave the Torah is the same God that's creating the world. It's the same God that's creating us. Musa, the essence of God. So God is in his ability to create something from nothing. The Ephes and from absolute zero mamish, which we don't have any idea what that means, absolute zero. <clears throat> I think according to science, there can't be such a thing as absolute zero. Maybe theoretically. Huh? Am I right? I don't know if I'm right. They tried to like bring absolute zero of this. I think what absolute zero means is that there's no movement of any molecules or anything at all. Just everything is just totally frozen. Huh? There can't be absolute zero. Uh, if you, you find out differently, you can tell me. As far as I know, there can't be. Similarly, there can't be any uh, absolute vacuum. Can't, first of all, there can't be an absolute vacuum because it, there has to be a space. Even if you pull out all the atoms or whatever, but there's, an, there's a space, so it can't be an absolute vacuum. There has to be an empty. Emptiness is also something. So maybe there can be an absolute vacuum from mass or something like that. I don't know. <clears throat> but in any case, that's only physical. We're only talking about physical. We're talking about physically. God creates the world from absolute nothingness. What does it mean, absolute nothingness? And we've talked about this before. Before the world was created, there was no it before. There was no before and there was no after. You can't say God existed before the world was created because before the world was created, there was no such thing as before or after. Right? There was no before. There was no being. There was no potential. There was no spirit. There was no... What, what was there? <laughs> it wasn't a thing. That's why I said we've said so many times, God doesn't really exist. God creates all existence. 
right? That, what I mean, he exists. I mean, obviously, he creates all existence. It's nothing in any way that we can possibly imagine. God is so infinitely, infinitely, infinitely real that it's impossible for us to understand it, but he's also infinitely good. And we can part, that's where the Torah comes from. That's the power of God's essence. Ani will feel that God is creating the world. When we feel God, <clears throat> it's not that there's, the world will disappear. Exactly the opposite. The world will take on infinite color, infinite meaning. You ever see these videos of people, in the, their children, whatever, they buy them glasses that they can see colors? You ever see that before? It's really, really, really quite amazing. Quite amazing. You know, there's these videos where children can hear for the first time. They hear for the first time. Oh, I cry when I see those things. <laughs> it's really something. Then there's some videos where people see the first time. I, I don't think I've really seen too many of those. See the first time. That's like overwhelming. You know, a person sees the first time. See the first time. But then there's videos where people see colors the first time. They can see, but they don't see colors. So all the time when they people, they, they every single one of them, they buy these glasses. I guess that, you know, you can put the glasses. They don't have to have an operation. They have these glasses. They can see colors. And all of the people that they see colors, they cry. Now you can ask yourself a question, what's the big deal? So he sees colors, he doesn't see colors. He sees the world, he's not blind. He can see that there are shapes, he can see that there are people. He just sees an extra thing. There's just a little bit of color. Okay, so, you know, it's a thing to cry about. Big people, strong people, you know, they, 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 you know, they, they break down crying to see. Because when you see the true nature of something, you bring out a whole new dimension of a thing, a new dimension of life, of vitality, that makes you happy. Well, that's what's going to happen <clears throat> in the future. We're talking about that the world is going to remain a world, but we're going to bring out a new aspect of vitality, but infinitely, infinitely more real and true than the picture itself. Here, we're talking about adding color, just adds color to shapes. You have the shapes, you just add the color a little, another sort of, you know, in interesting, you know, interesting, uh, how do you say, uh, depth to the picture, right? Instead of being black and white television, it's color television. I remember when my parents brought the first color television, oh, it was a big deal. Like the, instead of black and white television, it's not color television. Okay, that's something. But even nowadays, right, there's sometimes that black and white is nicer. Sometimes black and white is more artistic, more other, right? But in the future, it's not gonna be that way with the world. It's not gonna be that just an added thing to the world. We'll see the true nature of the world, the true nature of the creator, why the creator is creating everything. It's going to be the essence of God without any garments. But Dugma, so this is going to be in the future, like it says, it says that God will not hide himself from you. What does it mean he won't hide? It won't be covered over <clears throat> with a kind of, with like a wing, with a garment. And the light of God will be revealed in the future without any garment. <clears throat> Like it already was something like this in the time when the Torah was given. Like it says, like it says, you showed the Jewish people. Everyone at Mount Sinai, they saw God in order to know him. That there's nothing except for God. <clears throat> Sentence in the Torah. Everyone in the Torah saw this. <clears throat> Everyone in the Torah saw this. This is in Parshish Ves Hanan, right? 49, where is this? I'm talking about the giving of the Torah. This is the giving of the Torah. This is the, we're talking about the giving of the Torah. That's this. <clears throat> and from this additional light and life force, which is given to the Jews, will be given the darkness of the non-Jews will also be done away with. The, the glory of the Creator will be revealed. Everywhere, so everyone will really feel healthy and alive and happy, and <clears throat> they'll really reveal how precious every human being is, and how precious life is. Yeshlom, we can say, Shachir is the whole novelty that there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth that I create <clears throat> regarding the create the new Torah that there's going to be. <clears throat> I'm sorry, let's go again. That this whole novelty that there's going to be a new heavens. And a, and a new earth regarding to the novelty which was at Mount Sinai <clears throat> is, what do we say? At Mount Sinai, everybody saw godliness, right? So what's going to be better in the future? This is to tell us, and this comes by means of the new Torah that's going to be given. When God gave the Torah on Mount Sinai, <clears throat> 
<clears throat> the Jewish people felt that the Torah came from God, but it didn't last long. And the Jewish people weren't really receptacles for this. In the future, it says, when God reveals the new Torah, then the Jewish people will be receptacles for this all the time. And that's what's going to change the whole world. That we'll see the, the, the miracle that this physical world is, that every detail is. Cave insists that the main part of the Torah is <clears throat> when God gave the Torah Mount Sinai, the main part of the Torah, namely the secrets of the Torah of the Mashiach, it was concealed. The revelation, therefore, the revelation of God in the world was also concealed. But often, the main power, power of God, the essence of God, that by means of this, the world is being created, was also concealed. So because the godliness in the Torah was concealed, therefore the godliness in the world was concealed. So again, what does the Rebbe want to do? The Rebbe is trying to show us that the Torah and the world and God are not separate things. That the Torah and the world and God are one. Okay, God is one with everything, but especially with the world. God has a special purpose in creating the world, and this purpose is revealed only in and through the Torah. Therefore, if the godliness in the Torah is concealed, this essence of God is concealed in the Torah, like when God gave the Torah on Mount Sinai. So it says all the deep secrets of Mashiach were there, but they were concealed. So also the godliness in the world was also concealed. <clears throat> and therefore, even though that when the Torah was given, it says that there was <clears throat> removed the decree that God made that the upper worlds would remain spiritual and the lower worlds would remain physical. That's the way it was until God gave the Torah. <clears throat> as soon as Adam ate from the tree, so he concealed the good in the world. And God made it that the upper worlds, the good, would be remain up outside of the world and the world would conceal it. Right? So world, which is concealment, and <clears throat> heavens, which are revelation, they were separate. If you wanted to reveal the good in the world, the holiness in the world, you had to leave the world. You had to be out of the world. <clears throat> On the other hand, <clears throat> whenever good came into the world, it became physicalized, materialized. You couldn't understand spiritual ideas in the physical world. When God, that, that was caused by Adam eating from the tree. Selfishness covered over godliness. As soon as God gave the Torah, so it says that he he took away the barrier between the heavens, good, and the physical world, concealment. <clears throat> so when God gave the Torah, he removed this barrier, and there became a joining between the upper worlds and the lower worlds, that the L upper worlds came down, the Torah, and the lower worlds went up. God told us how to use the world to serve him. Right. So there was a, there was a unity. Nevertheless, even after this unity that happened on Mount Sinai, there remained the difference between the upper worlds and the lower worlds. High note, together that this whole, and the, uh, you see the 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 the, the, the um, category, the category of world remained low. Namely, it concealed over God's light, since that the main thing was concealed. What the, the secrets of the Torah they remain. Concealed. So because it was concealed, the word for concealment in Hebrew is olam, helam. So even when God gave the Torah and he revealed godliness, but still there was a good portion of godliness which remained concealed, namely the secrets, the deep secrets of the Torah, which are going to be given in the days of the Mashiach. Consequently, God, the godliness in the also the godliness in the world was also concealed. The Uma, but Latid Lava in the future, Kivashid Kala, since that will be revealed. The main portion of the Torah, namely this new Torah will be given. God will come from his essence, reveal his essence in the Torah. Then there will be revelation of godliness even in the world. The godliness in the world will be ultimate. Without any concealment at all. In simple language, no one will be interested in heaven. No one. 
the upper worlds will really come down here. All of the religions in the world are based on this division between heaven and earth. And heaven is good, and this world is bad. When the idea of Mashiach is that that is a lie. It's not so. This world is infinitely good, and in many ways it's infinitely better than in heaven. This physical world, because here is going to be revealed, the glory of God will be revealed, and all flesh will see together that the mouth of God is speaking to create everything. Everyone will see Begiloi. Shamatsiuta, the existence of Kal Basar, of your flesh, the physical world is coming from God. Shemahaveoto that is creating it from nothing to something. The power of God's essence. <clears throat> so that's the opposite of what's going on in the world now. I mean, they're trying more and more to take God out of the picture. Right? At least idolatry, all these religions, they admit that there is God, that there is a a, a superior power to us and that there's someone to pray to, right? That, that we're not the whole thing. In other words, that the world is concealing something, that something is being concealed. Now they're trying to take that away and say, no, there's nothing being concealed. The world, that's what there is. Just what in the world, that's all. All there is is world. There's no upper world. Or, that, that's, for, that's spooks. That's superstitions, right? That's not real. But the fact is that's death. That's what's called death. Death is body with no soul, the world with no spirit. That's death. In the future, what's going to be, but on the other hand, they got a good point. If God exists, then why isn't he revealed? Good point. In the future, it's going to be revealed. There won't be any difference between the upper worlds and the lower worlds. <clears throat> Since that they're one. Or like it says, <laughs> that the existence of the physical world, the physical created world, We'll see that it comes from the true, the true existence of God. So, according to this, now we can understand what's going to be the how Prashad Naso elevate elevates the giving of the Torah. The giving of the Torah is going to be this Friday we're celebrating, and Naso comes afterwards means elevated elevates even the giving of the Torah. How is that going to be? We'll talk about God willing to. Maro. Now let's do the yom yom. Yom yom. And hopefully a story. And that's going to be three o'clock. Three uh, o'clock yeah. story. Bye. One second, one minute. Let me turn this off.